so it's been complete ass it has been complete ass let's be completely honest um being chained disemboweled so you can't move right is that does anyone actually think that's a good thing it's like completely skillless ganking skillless main gameplay people pushing you around with fiend robes and dis and disemboweling you has been like the ass gameplay we've had to deal with for gankers for like the last year right i don't think anybody enjoys that it's fucking easy which is why gankers enjoy it but i don't think anybody actually enjoys being on the receiving end of it and i would say doing it as well it's not it's not challenging right it's not challenging or or, or or enjoyable gameplay. You're literally just pressing one button, waiting for an entire three second channel, and then somebody else does it for you afterwards, right? Boring. Boring. Abs oh, yeah, but it's, it's seen a huge fucking spike in it, mainly because of the mounts, but we've got that to talk about too. So this I'm really happy to see. I'm also happy to be honest from a doubt from a, from an actual like point of view of like this now deals your damage much quicker. So it's a lot less valuable to interrupt um, the, the claws because you're going to get more damage off in a short space of time, right? So it's actually a good buff to the claws as well in, in terms of them being an actual usable weapon, right? It's just fucking bollocks that they, uh, you know, they, 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 you know, were able to be changed and stuff and everything else. But it's a, good, it's a good fighting buff, I'd say, to the claws. I enjoy the buff. You'll notice this come through. If you disembowel someone now with this, you will fucking notice how quick the damage ramps off them. It's, it's disgusting. Um, so it's going to be really good, honestly. Uh, Dummy Nomad, I can't handle the psych and being closed. I know. I know. I want a second game to jump into. I was talking about this with Naz earlier today. I want a second game to jump into. To be able to play like something like, like Psycho, where you can just drop in and play, and it's just gone now. I don't know when they're doing the next one. Um, Balu, thank you for gifting a sub over to Mika for 800, guys. 800 total subs gifted to the channel. You fucking champion. Thank you. Massively. Um, and uh, congrats for hitting the 800 mark, I guess. Dude. What's claws incorrupted now? Not even, not even a joke. Not even a joke. They become a lot more valuable now, as actual like fighting weapons, right? How will you catch? This is this is the negative we have to talk about, diffuse. This is the negative we have to talk about. This is the negative we have to talk about. All right. Balut Socrates, fuck, dude. Socrates, thank you for 800 gifted. It's been a, it's been a, it's been a couple of days, guys. Not gonna lie. All right. <laughs> Sorry, Socrates. Thank you. What is there an update? No, this is the planned update, Fizzy Winks. This is the planned update. Hashtag on so PK. Shut up. I'll put you in the bin. Okay, fire staffs. With the last last patches overhaul, we saw wildfire staff finally come back as a deadly force to be reckoned with. Mainly because they overbuffed the shit out of it. So. Small tweak in damage numbers, 3%. This is what I want to see more of with Albion's balancing, honestly, is just minor changes to see how it impacts. If it still needs a bit further going, maybe looking at it a bit further. But yeah, minor minor tweaks to see how it plays out. Like, very good. I like that a lot. Honestly, unpaid spalu. Stop! <laughs> Streamer abuse. Oh, my days. I'm going to put you on the bin. Hang on. Forward slash put chat in the bin. I need to, I need to, I'm going to make, I'm going to make like a whole, like, like I've got this. I'm going to make a little overlay for me just to put you guys in the, the bin. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of that later. Quarter staffs. However, since Grail Seeker is already very strong in various content types and will benefit with the range increase, the duration of its wall and root effect have been reduced. Again, fantastic. I also don't particularly enjoy just being stuck in a fucking yellow beam of light, you know? when you're being ripped so it, with the claws going with the claws going quarter staffs grail seeker probably would have just kind of taken over with just everyone spamming grail seekers on top of each other to hold people down right under demon capes and shit so again good to see that this has been balanced out slightly as well um uh the duration and root effects just good 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 uh so that's gone down to 3.5 seconds and the root duration down to three again minor incremental changes to see how it plays out no crazy massive deletion right Suddenly finds himself beside his leftover garbage food in the trash bin. You guys are fucking wild. Is there any mason dust? Hmm. <laughs> you think? Put me in the bin, daddy. All right, guys. Don't don't go too far with this. All right. <laughs> fiend robe, fear aura. We've also ensured the fiend robe and graveguard armor can't be used to chain CC. Multiple players using the same abilities. Thank you. The biggest thing I've had to complain about for like the last year, especially in Albion Online, has been the, the seemingly like complete lack of diminishing returns, right? And one of the biggest problems we've had is the way some of these abilities have been coded to not trigger diminishing returns. Um, 
specifically like Graveguard armor, specifically like Fiend Robe and stuff. They have just allowed players to completely deny players from playing the game. And the saying that I've come up with and used so many times before has has been, you know, you can't outplay if you can't play. You know, if I if I'm sit there, if I'm if I'm just sat there, like I have my keyboard, right? If I can't do any, if I'm pressing my buttons and nothing's happening, right? I might as well just not have a keyboard, right? I might as well be playing on a smart fridge. It, it doesn't matter. I, if I'm just CC locked to death, I can't I can't play the game anyway, right? So so finally seeing some actual balance coming to all this sort of stuff that allows you know you to play the game to be able to hopefully counterplay this stuff is uh, is really really good. I'm very happy with it. So so seeing finally seeing some balancing to chain CC and chain displacement, I'm just so fuck I, I hope they don't stop. I hope they continue to to identify other areas where it's a little bit too strong and stuff and see what they can do to nerf that. So very happy. So rework the fear aura immunity effect. If an enemy gets hit by a fear aura, after three seconds, that enemy becomes immune to fear auras for five seconds. Again, this is the exact sort of shit that I was talking about, right? You get hit by a fear aura, after three seconds, you're then immune to fear aura for five seconds. So people can't just fiend robe, fiend robe, fiend robe, and just keep pushing you around in a circle. It, you don't have the use anymore for stacking fiend robes, right? Uh, which has just been those complete disabled. So I'm very happy to see that. Um, Graveguard armor. Enemies pulled by the chain are immune to another soul chain for 10 seconds. Again, you're not being pulled to the left and pulled to the right. How many deaths have I had that you guys have witnessed on stream? Where I've just been playing ping pong around the, the screen and stuff, unable to actually play the game. So I'm so... These are huge. These changes are fucking fantastic. I'm so happy to see this stuff, finally, after so much time complaining about it. I'm so happy to see this stuff happening. All these are changes and uh, a nurse a small scale ganking though. I mean, I, mm, I, I wouldn't say so. Most of the ganking that you experience with the 10 man groups, they're all using Ch Graveguard armors and Fiend Robe. It means it's good to have a Fiend Robe. It means it's good to have a, a, a uh, Graveguard armor, right? Possibly a couple to make sure you have somebody in range, but not everybody in it, right? And that's what a lot of my, you know, uh, times are being ganked by. Now you'll see people maybe in, in things like Mage Robes or, you know, um, Assassin Jackets and, you know, just, just other stuff to actually gank and, and fight, right? Assassin Jackets, I think, will probably be used a lot more again. Um, you know, obviously the invis, especially with the, some of the other changes which we'll, we'll go in and talk about with this as well. It means gankers need to diversify their builds, which is good. And I'm sorry, like saying it, it nerfs small group ganking. Small group ganking can fuck off if it was just fiend robes and claws, right? That's not small group ganking. That's that's stopping people from playing the game and it's shit, right? I don't care if it's five men with a with a with a fiend robes and claws. That's shit gameplay. It's shit being on the receiving end of that gameplay. And just because more people, obviously, if you're a ten man gank group, it's not going to affect you as much as this is. But if the small gang small gank groups are using specifically these strategies, then I'm happy that they're going to get nerfed, right? They can, you can still, I, I gank solo. I'll go out with a three-man gr uh, group and gank, and I don't use fiend robes, I don't use claws, I don't use graveguard armor. We still get a lot of money, we still get a lot of ganks, right? So it's not nerfing small-scale ganking, you can still small-scale gank. It just nerfs that particular type and strategy of small-scale ganking, which is nothing but a positive. Again, there are negatives that are going to come into this as we go further down here on the screen, which we'll talk about, but overall it's a net positive for the game. Snipe Expo, Whispering Bow. Whispering Bow, I think, would be huge as well. <laughs> Smart phrase. <laughs> Does the chain pull uh, nerf affect the undead dungeon mob that yoinks me immediately? I don't know, Plasmatic. I hope so. <laughs> okay, so potions. This is a pretty big one here, and I'll read out the direct uh, quote here first, right? Poison potions have been pretty strong in a vast range of activities, including PvE, ganking, and small-scale PvP. Particularly in ganking groups, poison potions bring too much valuable true. We're getting close enough to throw out poison uh, once at the target is enough to keep them out of gallop for a fatal duration. And that's the key point, right? Getting close enough to throw out poison once at the target is enough to keep them out of gallop for a fatal duration. This is the biggest thing with it. I can't tell you how many times I've been ganked by shit players. Uh, what gift is it, DQ? Um, absolutely shit players. But it doesn't matter because they, they scuffed their engaged, they scuffed everything, but they were close enough just to throw a poison pot. And because they had that poison pot, their, their eight friends can ride ahead of me and then dismount and then I'm done. It, it, that one poison pot just made it fatal, right? Made that the, the, the actual action of just getting poison potted fatal, which was dumb, right? The strategy doesn't offer much uh, interaction for a chase player on the mount, as such the throw range and poison duration have been reduced to make it uh, 
less easy to apply amounts. Uh, uh, sorry, to, to apply to amount and allow amounts to regain uh, gallop faster. This also reduces the overall damage output of poisons, which were already very strong option for a lot of other content. It's just still see plenty of use. So I think this has been true that uh, poison potions. I I, I do want to see a buff to healing potions, if I'm honest. I, I agree that poison potions have been incredibly strong for burst output, uh, mainly because of the long duration resistance reduction. So having that go down to three seconds of resistance reduction instead of six is honestly huge. Um, the damage going down is great. And obviously, yeah, the range reduction is just amazing, honestly. To just stop these, these again, I, the reason why often I dismount someone isn't because of the poison pot, right? That generally comes when I'm closer to them. It's the large gang groups that really benefit from the huge poison pot range. So again, I'm happy to see that, to be honest, as well. Um, let me catch up with chat here before we move on to this, because this is an important section. All right, after, after this uh, run through DQ. <laughs> no, their value will tank my millions. I'm in shambles. <laughs> he just sat there. Did, is it like, like like COVID? Like you stopped up on hand sanitizer and shit and then they stopped you from being able to sell it and now you just sat there with all of your fucking poison pots right on the cusp of their nerf in tears, <laughs> rocking back and forth. Uh, it's it, They'll still be used. They're still vital to the game. They're just, you know, changed. People who are ganking aren't going to pick up healing pots to gank with. People who are ganking, um, they might use stickies, maybe. Might use some. You might have cause for some sticky potions in the mix. Who knows? Yeah, no, the reputation's still scuffed, but diffused, but, but the reputation might still be scuffed, diffused, but I think the open world mobs will have a big impact on fixing that. I think the open world mobs will massively help with your reputation gain, because I'm not going to go grind in a fucking solo dungeon, but if I'm going low on rep and I can just sit there and smack any boss I see for hundreds of rep at a time, that's a big buff, honestly. This is, I think, some of the negative. But we'll go into this and why it becomes a negative when you look at some of the stuff that's been changed up here, especially, right? So this is a really important part to go over. And I, I want to give this, I'll give this feedback directly to SBI too. To encourage players to explore the open world and actively fight mobs, dismounting rooms have been changed. If a player dismounts with no enemy player within 40 meters, the player can instantly use their three weapon abilities, Q, W, E. However, the other slot uh, for abilities, head, armor, shoe, potion, food, will retain a five second cooldown, the same as we have now. So obviously you can't ride ahead, uh, dismount and ambush you know, instantly and stuff. It, it takes that ability away. You can't use a harvester cap. You can't use, you know, mercenary shit. It takes, it takes all this stuff away to, to make sure you can't use it effectively in ganking. It will not affect ganking. Um, but it does allow you, the importance of it is that this part here, actively fight mobs and stuff. Currently the system is shit. You can't walk and fight roaming mobs because then someone comes over to gank you and you have to mount up and then they can kill you because you've had to mount up and try and gain your gallop and everything, which is shit, right? Um, if you can even lease the mob aggro. So so this is, this is huge to allow you to dismount, kill the mob, mount back up, ride to the next mob, dismount, fight the mob, kill it and stuff, right? Very good, very good change. Um, I like it a lot, right? So this, again, another fantastic addition. That's what the exclamation mark is when you dismount, uh, by the way, there. Um, yes, you should get a, a 100,000 shield too and force field to push gankers away. I mean, uh, that's, that's, that's a little pedantic. In addition, mount health and most mounts used for travel, gathering, and small scale transport has been increased to better their chances of surviving being hit by fully charged mobs. The mount health has generally fallen behind in relation to player damage potential over the years, true, and mounts remained with much the same health pools while that of the players increased. Health for these mounts have increased for roughly 25 to 50%, making them better equipped to survive the new challenges in this update. So we, we have this uh, change here to make sure you can't, you know, cheese it out for ganking in any way. Again, this is just auto attack players and stuff. This is all good, right? Mounting up with abilities. E.g. faction mounts no longer places the mount ability on uh, mount ability slots on cooldown for 10 seconds. So again, really good. Um, time until gallop slot. So this is a big one too. Uh, before we get into this, time until gallop uh, stat on mounts. So previously, the time it took to get uh, back into gallop was always fixed eight seconds regardless of the mount. Now the time it takes to get back on gallop after taking damage varies by mount. This is the time to gallop stat on the mount. This makes it easier to escape ganks while mounted and encourages more players to venture into the outlands to take part in the new content added with this update. At the same time, gankers stand to benefit from the, uh, the elevated overall activity, which should uh, more than offset the individual ganks that might become somewhat harder, right? Which is true. 
increased activity. So, it, uh, I mean, it's a concept we can explain here briefly, right? Um, but I guess we've got a few things to talk about here. First of all, the, the gallop time, right? Eight seconds regardless of the amount, and then you had like the time to gallop shit that was added onto that, right? So it was really scuffed before for the mount stuff, right? Because you have all these different mounts with their different times to gallop, right? 2.5 seconds, uh, three seconds, whatever, four seconds, and this was all added onto, you know, that initial duration. Now, mounts with a low time to gallop are going to be insanely valuable, like for example, the mower bird, right? If you get hit, it only takes you 2.5 seconds to regain your gallop. That is huge. That is massive to have these mounts that can get your gallop back quickly, uh, but a balance around typically lower health and stuff, right? So really interesting to actually give you some serious choice in how you want to choose your mount and what activity you're doing, which I really like. And again, the reason why they are upping the health, which is completely fair and very reasonable, is that the new world mobs out there, the new open world roaming mobs are going to fuck your mount, right? Like, they're going to absolutely demolish your mount as you're running past on the current values we have for HP. If you get tagged by a mob when you're running away from gankers, you've lost your mount. Swift Claw, gone. You get one tagged by a big mob, that's going to screw. Like, no one's going to want to go out if you're just getting constantly dismounted by mobs. No one's going to want to go out uh, to the open world if you're getting dismounted by mobs and then immediately killed by gankers, right? That's really important. So everyone's been like, oh, I can't believe they're buffing the mount health. I can't believe they're buffing the mount health. It's like, it needs to happen for the open world. Like, it needs to happen for the open world. Um, can you not just dodge the, the mob? Um, have you, the whole point is that they're trying to put mobs, be more of these roaming mobs out in the open world and make them more valuable. Can you not just dodge the mob? Yes, you can try, but then just a mob dismounting you if you happen to run past it is a little OP, right? So, no, I I don't think that's an effective thing to say. And again, you don't, you, you want, the biggest thing is everyone seems to be complaining about gankers. Like, oh, gankers are getting screwed, gankers are getting screwed. This update is massively pushing open world activity. You've got fuck all people to gank right now in the game. You know what I mean? There's nobody there. Like, who are you? Like, you, you can gank sometimes, but with an update like this, what it's trying to do is get the open world to be active. So you're seeing more players. You might not be able to dismount and kill all of them, but you should be able to see more players. But with you seeing more players, with there being more activity out there, you have more targets to gank, right? And in a target rich environment, there's a lot more that you can do with that, right? If people go out there and every time they see a gank party, they die, which is what's happening for the majority now, is a lot of the time people are dying. They Albion have a specific equation, right? That they've held since the start of time that has been a little bit screwed recently in the open world, right? And that is a relation that they have to the ratio of a player that you see uh, or your ability to find a player in the open world uh, against your ability to dismount that player in the open world um, and then once that player is dismounted, your ability to kill them, right? So there's multiple paths there. One, that you see somebody. Two, that you're able to dismount them um, or they're able to get away. Three, that you're able to kill them once they've been dismounted or they're able to get away, right? And if those ratios aren't maintained properly, we see a huge dip in open world activity. And with that dip in open world activity, people stop going out. And if people aren't going out to do this content out there, it's useless. So what they're trying to do is create a target rich environment so you have more people out there to gank in the first place and yes you're not going to be able to gank all of them yes some of them might have a better chance of getting away but because of that we're going to see more people out there so you have more chances to gank people right um again i'm not saying i agree with all of this and we'll talk about the specifics which i don't like here uh in, in a moment right but that's really important to notice um mount health base factor okay so riding horse change Nobody's out on a riding horse in the open world other than if they're trying to do like a cheap shit tier 3 thing because they're just too squishy and they go down too quick. No one's out on armored horses because if you're going to be on a mount, you're going to be on one with carry weight or you're going to be on a fast mount, right? Armored horses fell into a weird spot. Now armored horses actually are genuinely useful because you have the armor on top of a higher base health pool. Like they might actually be a reasonable thing to take out there. Oxes, I think, are already super strong. Um, I don't know how I feel about the ox change because already tier 3 oxes are used to grief and troll and everything else. I think the problem, and you know, okay, we'll, we'll go into more of that, but yeah, this. Uh, Diabores going up to 30%. I, I you know, I, I feel personally that right now Diabores are in a pretty reasonable position, but yes, I can understand that they might be dismounted by those mobs and stuff, so you need to up it slightly. Cougar's health going up, that's fine. They're so easy to dismount. Having a little bit of extra health, I think is fine. Their off-gallop speed is, is pretty slow. Same thing with dire, uh, dire wolves there. 
Stag's 50%. I, I like that they have a higher base uh, health pool. I think it's a really good change. Uh, again, they're very squishy, very easy to dismount. You know, lizards, again, bit of a problem. So my main problem is really, uh, there's no thing on here about, uh, you'll notice bears. Bears haven't received any increase in HP. As far as we can see on this list. Um, ox is going up to 20%. I'm not particularly happy with. Pest lizards are already ridiculously strong because they have high health and high armor. Um, unless you're talking about like the the Thetford lizard, you know, maybe the swamp dragon. But even then, like because they have the Fort Sterling cape and they don't get slowed, they're very strong. Um, and especially with the new updates, they'll be very strong about getting away. Finally, I, I think one of the big problems we have is if you're buffing transport mounts, like the ox and the lizards, and you're simultaneously nerfing the only system that Albion has in place right now to take them down, which is stacked fear robes um, and, and graveguard armors and stuff, there's going to be a bit of a problem, I think, with transport mounts being too good, right? Um, and we'll go open the floor to anyone who wants to comment on that here in chat for a second. Um, yeah, you are, isn't it? Yeah. F yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the more birds help. Always, I haven't seen it here, but I guess it has. But I don't see. Uh, I don't see the 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 health there for more birds. It's all listed. Um. Socrates, thank you for ten gifted subs as well. By the way. You also really you can't interrupt their gallop. Yeah, you can't interrupt the gallop of lizards. So lizards are, are a big problem for me uh, with this buff. Um, Zerif, duck. Dej, uh, stick around and Reaper, Yell, Tuzon, uh, One Depart, Box Ghost, Know Your Elden, and Stud. Uh, congratulations, you've just been gifted a tier one sub from Zocrates. Thank you, Zocrates. You fucking champ for, for dropping 10 gifted subs on there. I appreciate it. Bears are stupid hard to dismount already, so I'm fine with that. Yeah, Bears, bears needed to not be uh, buffed. You know, so I'm, I'm glad the Bears aren't getting a buff. But, but they are getting a buff because of this. They are getting a buff because of all these changes, right? Which is a big problem. Which is a which is a big problem, realistically. Grizzly bear will be unkillable in next packs. Uh, yeah. So this is the problem. This is the problem. I, I do agree with you on this one, Diffuse, and, and and everyone else there. Like, so so it they some of these transport mounts are too strong. I don't know why people started running that shit out in the first place. You know, that's why it got so popular to run these set outs. I, I hated it because everyone else then got caught up in the mix of not being able to do shit against these players with stacked fiend robes and claws and stuff. If you if you got caught, you were done. No chance of escape. Zero. Which, as we talked about that equation earlier, that equation was broken. If you were dismounted, you were dead almost 100% of the time, right? As long as they have enough people to spread out and they're not complete morons, which was, you know, likely the case is that people can just spread out, right? So, so, so that's why they even came about, and they, they had too much of an impact. They were too strong, but now not having that, I do think we have a problem with the value that you get from oxes and, and lizards, especially with not being able to be slowed anymore. Um, you know, not being able to be slowed and, and, and getting more HP and, and the, those changes we've had before. I think we, we're definitely going to see a switch up. I think we're going to see more whispering bows and stuff, right? The, the key is going to be not just hold down right the key is going to be a couple like you're going to have to have different types of hold down so you're going to have a clause and i think that clause is going to have to go into a well-timed um you know like frost staff for example right and then maybe like an avalonian quarter staff and then you have it like whispering bows just wailing down on the target but you're going to have to have a variety gang, like a variety gang team now which i like that is good that is fundamentally better for the game to have to have actual intelligent gameplay to dismount someone with well-timed abilities um, and mixes of damage and crowd control and everything else. So you're not just full-on CCing someone to death. You have to have those mixes. And they're in within that, there, there comes more counterplay and, and, and reaction and action that you can take as the person being ganked, which is better for the game, right? Which is just better for... This, is, this for me, is the same shit as when they changed the... the you used to be able to dismount well long, long ago in Albion. You used to be able to dismount and you would instantly have your skills. The black zone became a point where anybody riding around on dire wolves would instantly kill anybody that wasn't on a dire wolf. It was garbage. They changed that to add a three second dismount rule. Now it's five seconds. But they changed that initially to be a three second dismount rule. So many gankers quit the game saying, I can't do anything anymore. This is unplayable. You've ruined ganking. It's too safe. It's so care bear. How can we do it now, right? 
the, the answer was just get good at the game. The answer was stop being shit and relying on dire walls just to get ahead of your opponent so you can instantly kill them. This is the same thing for me. Get good at the game. Find comps that work. Dismount the targets. I do, I do again though, low tier oxes are too strong already. I'm, I'm not enjoying seeing a health buff because we already have this shit in faction warfare, flag shit around in the royals, right? All these areas where you have people riding around on oxes just trying to loot or intrude on combat and being completely safe on a mount that's way too cheap. So I'm a little bit bothered by this one personally. I do think that oxes should be the sheer underguard transport mount or something that you're using in, the, in a safe area to gather with or whatever else. And with that in mind, I would say that the oxes off gallop needs to be even slower than it is. I would go as far as to say transport mounts in general. So, i.e. not mounts that have courier, but mounts that have a set carry weight on them, such as oxes, mammoths, and these things. I think they need to be, with these health buffs coming in mind, I think they need to be even slower off gallop. You don't want to transport mount unless you have a, a guard to take with you. So your, your ox is going to be tanky, your mount's going to be tanky, you're going to be able to resist the player's damage, but you're going to have to have a party to protect you, otherwise you are going to go down. That's not the case we have right now. So I would say that I would want... I would want any any mounts with set carry weights like oxes and 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 you know potentially some balance delivered but to, uh, lizards there pest lizards specifically i think only pest lizards really um potentially i don't i don't know about swarm dragons because they don't have an off gallop but you know there needs to be some other balancing to these mounts there oxes especially with the off gallop i think needs to be slower shiro how you doing welcome to chat you say lizards aren't that big of a problem right but with you not being able to slow a lizard with a poison pot, with you not being able to throw a poison pot now either without being closer to range, and with the them nerfing the, the chain CC weapons that made it possible to dismount them, that's that's the issue. That's the issue here. But there's some mounts that are just too strong in the game that we need to address with this with these changes. I think. I, I want to see. I want to see. I want to see a balance to bears again. I think. I again bears. Like I said, it's a, it's a, it's it's a transport mount, right? I don't know we're saying rams transport here. I don't know what the rams is. Is that? I think that's meaning the. I think that's meaning um. Like the martlock ram, I think, is what it's talking about. But any mount that has a set carry weight, like an ox or a ram or a bear, those mounts to me, I think they need slower off gallop to fix this. Because then you bring more balance to it, right? They, they should just be under guard. No, I'm, I'm sorry, but if you're running an ox solo, you're a dumbass, right? Ox is a sheer transport mount. You should have an armed guard for that shit. And with them having a higher health pool, it's harder to dismount them. It's easier for a party to protect them, but that's fine, right? I think that's completely balanced. But gankers, gankers have got... got that, that equation with ganking has been screwed for, for far too long. This, this helps to fix that, but there, it has developed some more issues, I think, just with these changes happening at the same time. Uh, specifically as these changes. I get why they're doing it because it's important for the open world uh, patch that we're having to make sure that people can go out and enjoy the update without just being content for gankers, right? That's one of the big things, right? I, I understand if you enjoy ganking, right? But there is more to this game, right? If you want to just solo gank or, or just group gank and just do whatever, that's fine, right? But other people aren't going out to be your specific content. Is one of the biggest things. I've done my share of ganking. I used to go out and just solely PvP. I didn't touch anything else in the game. The game is a lot more wide, a lot more varied now. People aren't playing the game to be your content as a ganker. That's all it comes down to. And I say that as someone who enjoys PvP, who often tries to force fights in the open world by dismounting people and stuff, they need to bring the balance around to it to make sure that people can enjoy the open world update, right? And that is important. I do like about like how they're going about doing this. I do think they've, they've, you know, they've made a few slip ups specifically with the oxes and I think possibly with lizards here. And, and again, bears are involved in that, obviously, because they haven't touched bears on this list. It shows they know they're already super strong. Mount prices will no go, uh, will go up? No, no, I don't think so. We might see an increase in the price of riding and armored horses if people actually start using them a lot more, which is good to be honest, because the economy around them is really bad right now. It's kind of not really worth the time investment to raising armored horses and riding horses right now, especially at higher tiers. Yeah, Grail Seeker received a very minor nerf, but 0.5 seconds on the root duration and wall duration. So not, not crazy. It's good incremental nerfs. I like that SPI is doing this. Do you think the changes will have a side effect on other areas in market prices? Um... I, I want to say yes. Uh, in general, my hope personally would be two things with the economy. 
One being that there's more people out in the open world drawing loot from more areas, so there might be more stuff generated by the black market, meaning that we're going to get more stuff crafted and sold to the black market, uh, you know, which means resource prices, everything goes up, you know, crafted goods go up. They're being removed from the economy into the black market before they're on that list to be delivered back again. If we have more players out in the open world competing in these open world objectives day to day, not just at CTAs or doing instance content, we might end up with a higher global trash rate of gear. Or not, not a higher trash rate, the same trash rate, but more stuff feeding into that system, right? More people playing there, so more stuff is trashing, um, which which means, again, a generated requirement um, for, for armors and horses and, and everything, right? So just that could see a little bit of a, a, a price hike over everything. Um, but again, it, it depends, really, you know, on, on how popular it is, on how much conflict is happening in the open world. Winter Bear is pretty trash, if I recall. You... Uh, recall wrong or a little bit too along there Rio winter bears busted strong right now I watched one of my guys on discord run through a gank squad with it just walk through them he even span around them a little bit to troll them the biggest thing for me I, I, I when you say they won't they love safety so that's one of the biggest things for me they need to diminish the value on safe pvp or safe safe pve rather right Corrupted Dungeons chest ratting needs to be made way less viable. Yellow zone, blue zone, way less viable. It should be okay to do that stuff if you want to chill, if you want to explore the game, if you're getting started with the game. People sitting in yellow zones late game, because it's more consistent with not having to die, not having to travel, all that is, a, is an issue, right? They're trying to combat that with the idea of zone value. So dungeons aren't worth shit if the mobs have been farmed in them too much. Open world mobs aren't worth shit if they've been killed too much, right? Um, but I I don't know, right? Like I I, I don't I don't know. Like they, they, I think like I feel like they need to make sure the yellow zone and blue zone value isn't good, right? The 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 corrupted dungeon ratting isn't good. They need to to have a noticeable difference between safe safer instance content or genuinely safe uh, non full loot PvP content and the full loot kind of shit that you can gain there if the risk isn't worth the reward it's not going to make a difference this update's not going to change anything but we'll see we'll see how the, how the escalation of the fame is of the of the loot silver everything is royal jacket i think would be pretty huge in ganking groups for sure can we do a giveaway do you, do you want to give me something to give away or are you just coming into my stream to ask me to not only give you my time and experience and, and effort or whatever but also my, my money in game because i don't have time for that my guy i'm sorry like i int my own silver enough just to try and make content for youtube and other stuff i i definitely don't have it just to throw at your ass they are introducing a tutorial to explain how back zone works uh oh are they how would the immunity fountains work give players a chance to survive more than five seconds in black zone it'd probably be a good idea to be honest nox wouldn't it I, I've said this before, but I, I think the portal zones are dumb, personally. I would take the portal zones away, right? And I would I would have a, a kind of outpost or very similar to the rest zones that you have. Uh, Arthur's rest in those areas. I would take the portal zones away and just have a a kind of north northern outpost. Eastern outpost, southern outpost, whatever, for the different portals, right? Um, and then that area just has the multiple exits and the shrines for leaving. And then you, you kind of take away... You, Right now we have a portal zone which people can be ganked in and then that portal zone leads to a couple of like areas that are prominent to go into the black zone which are often heavily ganked as well if you if you had just an outpost area which was just like a you know a, a little town whatever you could have a storage box there if you didn't want to go all the way back into limhurst to drop shit um and then you have four exits so rather than having a portal zone you know then going to four exits and so if you just have that straight zone going to four exits which then go to another three exits and it just opens up massively right that that's what i would do i i don't like the portal zones i've never liked the portal zones i think they're kind of silly if i'm honest with you but there's no reasonable content you can do with them but the portal zones coming out in the patch have been massively reworked so the portal zones i think will be very aggressive for quick and easy content which might be good so with the update it might be good the current version we have i i dislike them completely but with the update the new portal zones might be quite interesting so we'll see They're getting closer and closer to a fully balanced game representing tons of different types of content. I massively agree with that statement. I massively agree with that statement. 
I think they're doing a really good job at trying to diversify the value, the the time investment, you know, just the enjoyment of multiple different activities in the game. I think we got a little overboard with instance content in the game, but they had to do that because the game got to a point where um, like there was a lot of players and the structure for holding that many players wasn't really there. So they bust out all this instance content, make sure that regardless of how many people were doing what kind of content, you always had somewhere to go for the size of content you were looking for. And then now with this update, they're improving the open world to try and offer you that same open world experience that so many of us knew and loved from before. I do think this massively impacts solo ganking, which I tremendously worry about, to be honest with you. Like that's my biggest thing, is I do think this massively in, like intrudes on on like dismounting a player and, and forcing a fight with the player solo, especially because people who are doing all this content in the open world are going to have their mount up next to them. Whenever people doing chests on the Rose of Avalon, people doing open world content, people doing gathering shit, people are going to have their mounts up next to them and be able to mount up, dismount to do every type of content. There was a point in the game where I would have preferred they pushed to more committed dismounting, but that you can't do that right now in the current format of the game. But that's the one thing I, I do massively worry about is your ability to, to do anything solo uh, ganking. You know, like you're going to have to have, I think, a couple of people to gank with now, minimum, honestly. But I mean, that that is really what ganking is, is by having that full advantage. My thing is, I hope that they have enough objectives out there that are worth fighting over to generate conflict and actually encourage fights that way. You know, not just the one sided. We have the advantage. We want to gank you. We want to kill you. Right. And the person trying to get away. Like less, less cat and mouse and more cat fighting, if that makes sense, right? I want to see some CC resistance nurse because there's no way I'm going 8-3 uh, mace in red zone to get Zerg by police uh, to stun mounts for more than half a second, even if I have a chance of killing them. I mean, I mean... Yeah, no, I mean, the red zone's the red zone's scuffed, I think, honestly. The reputation system is, and, and, and how you gain and lose reputation is in dire need of a rework. And also how you're impacted by reputation in general, right? There's a, there's a, there's a big problem with reputation in the game, right? In, in my mind right now, uh, that the players are taking advantage of, right? I'm scrolled up a bit in chat, guys, so I'm trying to keep up with the comments that people are saying, so... If your comments aren't getting read out straight away, it's just because I'm trying to make sure I, I, I get the general idea of what everyone's trying to say. When you've mastered the soup cabbage business, you'll raise mounts yourself. Fair enough. Can you please put forward an idea? Clickable nameplates. I mean, I, I agree with that, Naritos. I, I hate that people with widescreen have an advantage over people that don't play widescreen because they can inspect you sooner. You know, you, you can't see what people are doing from the edge of the screen. I, I would love clickable nameplates. I just don't know the feasibility of that. I think there's a lot of issues with that. Um, because when you make uh, a nameplate an interactable thing, uh, there's a difference in how it has to load, right? So it, there's there's problems and impacts that has on performance, on, on everything. Then. So I, I there is mechanical reasons, I think, why they have not got that in place, but I don't know if they can overcome them, right? Uh... This guy's asked for a giveaway second time in a row. He's getting timed out. Don't come into chat. I, I, I don't need to tell this to all of you because most of you are just completely reasonable human beings. Don't come into someone's chat and just ask them to give you shit. Like, people have left the Albion directory for a feeling like there's like a lack of support and stuff, right? I'm incredibly lucky to have an amazing fucking community. But like, don't, don't go into people's chats and ask for fucking shit, you know? That's completely obnoxious, right? To just hop in there and do, yo, give me some free shit, you know? It's fucking wild, honestly. Can I give away a foot pick? Now we're talking. <laughs> just fucking eat my fucking legs straight up there. Get these little toesies out for you. 8.3 stats are now giving 100% bonus fame. Uh, is insane. And yellow zone farming is uh, too valuable. I watch everyone in 8.3 gear one shotting mobs and getting crazy fame per hour, screwing new players. Exactly, dude. Uh, Yellow Zone needs to be way less valuable. Way less valuable, honestly. Um, like it's it's just insanity, it's just insanity. I I, I think I think the the fame satchels could possibly have different scaling values for red zone, yellow zone, and black zone, right? So you get a very low bonus for using them in, uh, in, in, in you know, blue or yellow zones or whatever, and then red zone a little bit high and black zone, ultimately like a big jump of how valuable they are. 
But the, yeah, people are getting way too much value out of yellow zone and blue zone right now. And that's the big thing that's stopping a lot of players from even wanting to go out and explore. It's not about like, I want to kill these players. I want them in the open world. You're denying them the, the ability to even explore. Like, because they're looking at what's the best fame power? What's the best silver power? Oh, I can consistently do these dungeons at no risk and not have to die and regear and not have to worry about being ganked and play. I can just grind the fuck out of them and advance quicker than anything else, right? So that's what players are doing. So the risk reward doesn't play into it because the reward is good doing that. So unless they address the risk of these safe areas, you know. So, uh, pumped. I think things are going to be a great direction. It's going to be wild in the new update. I'm massively looking forward to the new update for sure. I will for sure be running through red zone with my full CC resistance winter bear next patch. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, mean, I don't know if, if people come up with some there's some good damage things you can run to, to rip through stuff i think you, like r damage resistance will be important next patch damage resistance on high on high health is huge right good update for gathering it is definitely is an update for gathering Always enjoyed the discussion. You're more than welcome. You know, more than welcome, guys.